Hi, this is Jessica with Dining Traveler and welcome back to my kitchen. This is episode four, the Dining Traveler cooking series where we try to make our favorite dishes from our travels here at our home. And this time we are going to Japan, which is one of my favorite places in the world. I was stationed there 17 years ago in Okinawa and it was for me one of those transformative travel experiences. I fell in love with the people, I fell in love with the food. Several years ago I had the opportunity to go back twice and it was that same loving feeling of great food. So in this episode we're going to make yakisoba which is one of my favorite Japanese noodle dishes and it's relatively easy to make and I know that some of us can be intimidated with making Japanese food at home so I tapped into one of my lifelines which is Daisuke Utagawa. He is the partner of one of the most popular Japanese restaurant groups in DC, the Daikaya group. So before we start cooking let's see what Daisuke has to say. I'm here with Daisuke, one of my favorite food people, and he is one of the partners of the Daikaya Group, one of and based in Washington, D.C. And one of your restaurants, Hatoba, has been making these amazing yakisoba kits that I tried, and it was delicious, and it inspired me to try to make it at home somewhat from scratch. And you have some great tips for those who don't live in D.C. and have access to, to Hatoba on how you can make it at home. So if you can share those tips, that would be great. Right, um, so two important parts of yakisoba is obviously the noodles and the sauce. Um, the yakisoba noodle comes actually pre-cooked, steamed. So mm -hmm. when you cook them, they are sort of bunched together and you don't want to force pull them apart. All you have to do is, you know, pour just a little bit of water on it and it'll just loosen straight away on the pan, um, obviously with oil. What is important to many of Japanese people in terms of yakisoba is the noodles to have a, you know, kind of a nice chew to it. So um, I like to cook the toppings, if you will, separately from the noodles. So, you know, I, I might part cook the toppings, you know, make the pork crispy a bit, and then add a little bit of vegetables, put that aside, start cooking the noodles um, and cook them for a, a, a bit longer than you might think just to almost sort of like to cook out the moisture from the noodles then it becomes that kind of a pleasant chewy texture add back the rest um, you know toss a couple of times reheat heat them and then you add the sauce um, the second important thing is the sauce um, I can't really pronounce it very well, Worcestershire sauce. Um, I always have difficulties <laughs> doing it, so it's fine. <laughs> Basically, that is, uh, that's sort of the basic taste of what we call yakisoba in Japan. Um, and uh, yes, they, you know, there are many yakisoba sauces sold at, I guess, Asian grocery store, Japanese grocery stores in particular. And they're very different, uh, um, you know, they have kind of a different f uh, flavor profile. Uh, ones from the west tend to be sweeter, ones from the east, like Tokyo area, is a little bit drier. Um, and if you cannot find the yakisoba sauce, you can substitute it with uh, Worcestershire sauce. And uh, uh, But they tend to be drier, so you can add brown sugar or molasses. Um, you know, there's no definitive rule that yakisoba has to taste this way. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just kind of play with it to your taste. And, you know, yakisoba itself, the noodles have taste, there are vegetables and pork and all that, so you don't really need to make it overly complex. Um, and uh, that's it. But uh, the other thing I highly recommend looking for is this aonori, you know, those little mm -hmm. green uh, seaweed mm -hmm. flakes. Uh, I, I know it looks kind of just a decorational, but it really, really adds flavor. It has a very nice contrast to the, uh, you know, the seafood, it adds seafood contrast to the rest of you know, the, the lamb based um, flavors, if you will. And the last question I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you is that you are a big um, wine and spirit person. What would you pair this with? Um, oh your... my God. Uh, you know, if I were to pick, if I had to pick one alcohol drink, it will probably be very, very chilled vodka. Oh, okay. That I know will work. Okay, a shot of vodka and your yakisoba. Yeah, you're yeah. Done. So, you know this vodka has an interesting way of really accentuating the the complexity and particular flavors of whatever you're eating, right? So uh, I know, a sh uh, but you know you want really chilled. You know, basically vodka pulled out from the freezer and just a couple of shots. You know, awesome. during uh, that will really. Uh, it'll make my day, I think. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I have some uh, Russian standard in my freezer, so I'll make sure to... Yeah, yeah try that. You like that. Remember my yucky so well. Well, you know, thank you so much, Daisuke. It's always a pleasure to see you, even in the distance. Hopefully, uh, one day soon, we'll be eating together again. So, right, yeah, all of us together, and we'll yes. have a feast. <laughs> well, wishing you and your family lots of health. And again, thank you so much for, for all this advice, because I'm actually going to get ready to cook. So uh, this uh, right. is very, very helpful. Thank you. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. to you. So we're going to start with the vegetables, which are carrots, cabbage, onion. So we first are going to make little matchsticks with the carrot. So because I'm lazy, I'm going to use a julienne cutter. This is like probably like seven or eight bucks at, at the store. But if you don't have it, you can just go ahead and cut it with the knife. I got a Napa cabbage. If they don't have it at your supermarket, these are mostly found in Asian supermarkets. I've seen them also like at Whole Foods, um, but you can just also use a regular cabbage. No biggie. And it seems like a lot, but it will wilt. So I usually, the recipe that we're doing now is going to be for four people. So I usually use like half the cabbage. So let's talk about the mandolin. I mean, some people are going to be like, Jessica, you're being lazy. It's just, you know, a small onion. But I love this thing. This is like so easy uh, to use and it just creates like the perfect, even thin cuts of onion or you can even use it for potatoes. Um, any other type of vegetable. I love it. You don't have one in home. No biggie. You can just uh, use a very sharp knife and just make very uh, thin cuts. Be very careful. I love that this one actually has a grip. Um, there was a guy that I actually used to work with that um, almost sliced his finger off. So just be safe. And I put a cutting board underneath. So the next step in our prep process is going to be the meat. And in this case, we use pork belly. And usually when you see it at restaurants and many other places, a very thin cut of pork belly. Unfortunately, I couldn't find that. If you don't have anything else, you can definitely use bacon. So what I'm gonna do with this, I'm just gonna cut it into smaller pieces. So we're gonna add now the oil to the wok to make the vegetables. So. This is going to be like around two tablespoons, so it coats the whole bottom of the wok. So once the oil is hot and ready to cook, we are going to throw the onions. I'm going to add the carrot. And the pork belly. So this is kind of a big quantity because we're gonna make this for four people. So I would say three to five minutes once uh, the pork belly is pretty cooked. So as Daisuke mentioned uh, previously, we want to make sure we loosen up the noodles first because if we just throw them into the stir fry, they're, they're going to get clumpy. So we're going to do this in a separate pan. And what I like about the package that I bought at the store is that they already come like an individual size portion, so it's easy to measure. You see, so just a little bit of water, a little bit of heat, and they're loosening up. Yakisoba noodles, you can find those at most Asian supermarkets um, and they usually come in the uh, refrigerated noodle area and I live in the DC area and I've been able to find them at the Japanese supermarket Hana here in DC but I've also found them at H Mart, I found them at Eden Center. So now the fun part, let's add the noodles. And with the tongs, we're going to mix everything in. 
I really like this uh, tip from Daisuke from separating the noodles and then putting them uh, with the vegetables in the meat because the first time that I did it, it was like a bit messy, the noodles were still stuck, um, and then you try to add water and it's just not the same. So if you have two frying pans, and by the way, I'm using a wok, but you can just use any big frying pan. I just like that a wok gives me a lot of uh, space to maneuver, especially if I'm making a quantity enough for four people. So now it's time to add the sauce. Um, so it would be two tablespoons uh, per person. So that actually comes up to be around half a cup. I bought a pre-made yakisoba sauce at the Japanese supermarket, Ota Fuku. And also, like Daisuke says, you can try to make your own yakisoba sauce at home. He recommends mis mixing Worcestershire sauce with a little bit of molasses or brown sugar to get that taste. This smells so good. Make sure it's nicely coated. Every noodle has that nice brown color. So this, with a little help of friends, is how I make yakisoba. It usually takes like half an hour and it makes a great lunch or even dinner for the family. So please let us know if you have any questions or tips in the comments. And arigato gozaimashita!